Hey Sugar Geeks, Liz here. You guys have asked me over and over again for a doctored red velvet box mix, so today I'm gonna show you how. The reason we doctor a box mix instead of making it from scratch is because sometimes people don't know how to bake from scratch and they're intimidated by baking from scratch. So doctoring a box mix is a great way for beginners to learn how to start making cakes that taste like they're made from scratch but are pretty much foolproof. Coming up next on The Sugar Geek Show. To start off, I'm gonna add one box of cake mix to my stand mixer. I'm using Betty Crocker, but you can use any brand. You can also do this with a hand mixer or a whisk. Then we're gonna add our flour, our sugar, and our sour cream. Sour cream gives the red velvet its nice tangy texture and it makes it nice and moist. If you don't have sour cream, you can use Greek yogurt. We're also gonna add in a little bit of cocoa powder, salt, baking soda, vanilla, melted butter, oil, and some buttermilk or you can use regular milk with a tablespoon of vinegar added to it. Don't forget the eggs, make sure they're room temperature. Go ahead and mix that all together for two minutes. This cake recipe is for beginners and it's pretty foolproof, but if you wanna take it up a notch, definitely check out my authentic red velvet cake recipe from scratch. It's really easy and it's on sugargeekshow.com. And now I'm gonna add in about a tablespoon of red food coloring. This is super red from AmeriColor, but it's totally optional if you don't wanna add it in. If you don't add it in, your cake is gonna be more of a reddish brown texture instead of a vibrant red. Now I'm gonna go ahead and prepare three eight inch by two inch pans with some cake goop. It's a homemade pan release, but you can use any kind of pan release that you like. Now we're gonna divide this batter into three pans and bake at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for about 25 to 35 minutes until the top bounces back when you touch it. When you take your cakes out of the oven, let them rest for about 10 minutes in the pan or until you can touch the pan without it feeling too hot. Then run a knife around the outer edges, take the cooling rack, place it on top of the pan, then holding the pan and the cooling rack together, flip them both over until the cake comes out the rest of the way. Before you start stacking your cake, you wanna make sure it's nice and cold. This is a really soft, delicate cake, so I'm going to wrap it in some plastic wrap stick it in the freezer for about 30 minutes or into the fridge overnight get the butter that's in the cake nice and firm and it'll be a lot easier to frost so before you start stacking your cakes you want to trim off the dome and this this recipe doesn't have a huge dome but it is a, it's got a little dome this is a ginsu knife but you could use a bread knife just anything that's serrated just making small little cuts, keeping my knife nice and flat while rotating. And then you get to eat the top, so bonus. And if you're making um, a vanilla cake, sometimes I will also trim. <laughs> if you're making a vanilla cake, sometimes I'll trim off the edge. This is really hard to do with Ezra in here. If you're making a vanilla cake, <laughs> If I'm making vanilla cake, sometimes I'll trim off the sides, but for red velvet, you don't have to trim. All right, so to decorate our cake, the first thing we're gonna do is put down our non-skid pad and a cake board. I like to have my cakes chilled in the fridge just until they're firm enough to handle. Now we're gonna add some buttercream. I'm just using my Swiss meringue buttercream recipe. I like Swiss meringue buttercream because it tastes good with everything. And then we're gonna push that down with our spatula back and forth and then flatten it down so it's nice and even, shooting for about a quarter inch. When I teach people, I say it's kind of like petting a kitty. Back and forth. You'll see people do this on Instagram and they're just like super fast. I'm, I'm not like that. So then come down kind of low. Does that look level or does it look flat on one side? Is it rounded? Try and make it flat. All right, I'm gonna set up the second layer. Press that down. Make sure it's even. Smooth that one out, make it nice and level. All right, so now we're gonna put a crumb coat over the entire cake, which just means a literal super thin layer of buttercream to seal in the crumbs. We'll uh, take a bench scraper to smooth out the sides. I can see that this side of my cake is a little bit, it's like sticking out too far. So I'm gonna push it over. Or you can even trim it off a little bit. 
If you don't do a crumb coat, then all of the crumbs from the cake are gonna get into the final layer. Yeah, that's better. Okay. Into the freezer. While the cake is chilling, go ahead and color your buttercream. I'm gonna do a sort of an ombre pattern for the decoration. This is probably about two cups of buttercream and I'm gonna add about a teaspoon of pink food coloring. And we're going to use this to build the rest of our colors. You don't wanna just add straight red to your buttercream because it's gonna make it really flat and dull and it won't have a ton of life to it. Plus, too much food coloring tastes really bitter and gross. So we're starting with electric pink as the base color and then I'm gonna add some egg yellow, which is a kind of orangey color and that will make it more of an orangey red instead of like a super bright electric Valentine's Day pink red. So now we're gonna have a peach and I'm gonna add two tablespoons of super red from Americolor and now we have a salmon pink color. So now let's melt down part of our buttercream in the microwave and that's going to cause the gel coloring and the fat in the buttercream to emulsify and become one. And that's going to intensify the color. So I'm gonna take out one third of the buttercream, melt that down in the microwave until it's just melted. So I don't think I want mine to be any redder than that because I don't want it to taste bad but if you needed it to be more red, you could add a little bit more red. Maybe I'll add just, just a tiny bit, just because it's like very slightly kind of orange. Just maybe like another half a teaspoon. So obviously this is now gonna be kind of hot, a little bit soft, and that's understandable. You could put this back into the fridge for like 10 minutes to just kind of to get it to set up a little bit, but I'm used to working with it at this soft consistency, and it will get darker over time. So I have my crumb coated and chilled cake right here. All right, I'm gonna take my red buttercream and put it into this piping bag. And I'm gonna cut off the end. I'm gonna apply some of my red buttercream just around the bottom. I'm gonna do two lines, nice and thick. And then I'm gonna squeeze the excess out and add some white buttercream back into it because I want it to be a gradient. So it's, to make a gradient, it's really good to like start with a base color and then keep adding white to it to make it get lighter and lighter. So now I have my slightly lighter pink, pinky red color. Put that back into the piping bag. Now we're getting into kind of back to that nice light pink color. You could use a different piping bag, I suppose, if you were concerned about um, it, the colors kind of running together, but I'm not really concerned about that. Oh my gosh, I almost don't have enough. And then the last one, we're gonna do white. All right, I'm gonna take the top and smooth that out first. Get that nice and flat. All right, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna smooth this out with the bench scraper first. Look how pretty. All right, now I'm gonna take this comb and I'm gonna start gently scraping it into the surface of the buttercream. I'm using the Rustic Scallop Cake Comb, double-sided from Esther Cakes. I'm gonna use that to make this cool design. I'll have a link to this cake comb down in the description below. A little spot where my buttercream is too low. I knew I should have kept some in a piping bag. Once I start getting to the point where it's like almost done, I like make sure that my cake um, comb is like really, really clean between every scrape so that I don't drag the buttercream over on top of itself. Just scraping and scraping and scraping. Go nice and slow. until it looks smooth and beautiful. Or until your 
brain says you can stop. I feel like it's not perfectly, perfectly, perfectly smooth, but I'm going to stop because I don't think it's ever going to be where I want it to be. And I'm just scraping more and more of my buttercream off. All right, this is a Wilton 2D piping tip. All right, I'm gonna take my leftover reddish color of buttercream all right, so now I'm gonna do a little rosette here. And then I'm gonna come 90 degrees, 180 degrees, I guess, 360. I don't know my degrees. And then do one in the middle. This is how I space out my little rosettes. And then I'll put two in between each one. That way they're all spaced evenly. Cake hacks. Oh, you know what I gotta do is I gotta put this on my platter. Lift this up with my offset spatula. A little bit of buttercream on there to make sure it sticks. Back on. Use my offset spatula to lower it down. You can decorate your cake directly on the platter if you want to. Got some gumballs. So if you can see like your cake board just a tiny bit, you can just take a little tiny piping bag and you can re-smooth it out with your little guy here careful and if you have some buttercream on the board like I do you can take a moist paper towel and just clean that off the edge and give it a beautiful finished look on your cake and that's it that is how you doctor up a box mix to make a delicious red velvet cake almost from scratch so moist so fluffy and goes perfectly with that Swiss meringue buttercream I love doctoring box mixes because it doesn't have that processed chemical taste that many box mixes do but it's still foolproof so that's it guys, I'm Liz Merrick. If you want more recipes like this one, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and I will see you next week. Bye.